Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. Today, the topic I have for you is about DARVO, how blame shifting becomes self-blame through abuse. This is kind of a follow-up to the previous video that I did on the victim narcissist. I'm going to put the link in one of these upper corners. You'll see the little I dot. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out. Someone suggested that I do a video on this. They sent me a link, which I'm also going to post in the description below the video if you want to check it out. So what is DARVO? DARVO was coined by Jennifer Freud, a psychology professor at the University of Oregon. DARVO stands for Deny, Attack, reverse victim and offender. So what does DARVO look like in real life? So what happens is the first step is you call out a manipulative or disrespectful behavior or you say no to sexual advances or some kind of abuse or you flat out make an allegation of abuse. Step two is the abuser, the offender denies it. They're going to use gaslighting and minimization techniques like it didn't happen, I didn't say that, I didn't do that, or if it did happen, it really wasn't that bad. Or, you know, he didn't really put his penis inside of you, so it couldn't have been sexual assault. The third stage is when the abuser or the offender attacks you or your credibility for confronting them. They will say things like, you're crazy, your memory doesn't work right, you're confrontational, you're negative, you're looking for a fight, you like drama, you were wearing a short skirt. And step four is the abuser or the offender reverses the roles of victim and offender. So this is when they play the victim and they make you be the bad guy. They're going to change history, rewrite history, so now it's your fault that they did something wrong or you're an unfit parent because you had suicidal ideations when actually those suicidal thoughts were a direct result of their abuse. They accuse you of making it all up. They will accuse you of being cruel. They will even accuse you of being aggressive. So this is the typical predictable pattern that abusers do when you confront them. You know, we talk about not confronting them. Why? Because this is what happens. Usually it's good to confront them at least once so you find out who they are. Just be very careful. Some of the ways that they can aggressively deny this could get very scary for you, could be putting your life in danger. So the objective is always to discredit the victim in order to discredit the allegation. This happens in interpersonal relationships, this happens in families, as well as institutions and organizations. It even happens on the larger scale in society through the news. So the same thing will happen with whistleblowers and investigative journalists who report things that the powers that be and the mainstream media, their gaslighting instrument, don't want people to know. So look at what happened with Edward Snowden, look at what happened with Julian Assange. First comes the character assassination and discrediting, and then comes the false accusations. So why do abusers use DARVO? What purpose does this serve? Well, it's a way of evading responsibility and diverting the attention away from the facts and the accusations and their guilt while creating uncertainty in both the victim and the bystanders. Most importantly, the victim starts to self-doubt and then self-blame. And what they found in this article that, again, you can find below in the video description, what they found in these studies was that the stronger the DARVO reaction, the greater the self-blame of the victim. It causes you to feel crazy. It causes you to feel stupid, guilty, responsible. This is one of the reasons why you took on too much responsibility for what went wrong in that relationship because you were always being blamed. Therefore, you blamed yourself. DARVO is also a way of imposing the mandate of silence. Abusers will groom their targets to be quiet and not speak up about the abuse. So if they tell you that you're crazy and you start to think that you're crazy, you're not gonna speak up about the abuse because you're afraid everybody else is gonna call you crazy. When it's used on a societal and institutional level, it's also used to silence or shame the opposition and to cause people to disbelieve the victim. The bottom line is this gets really confusing for everyone.
you can see hundreds of these examples in the 800 page Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report about the sexual abuse scandals in the Catholic Church. You'll see how they use this tactic over and over again to deny the suffering and reality of the victims, to deny and minimize the severity of what happened, and of course, and most importantly, to protect the image of the institution. So I would love it if you would share some examples of those four DARVO steps from your experiences in the comments below so other people can read through those and see different examples of how this might apply to their own life. I also want to remind you guys, every other week we have new videos on YouTube and on the other weeks, on the other every other other weeks, you'll see that we have new episodes of the Inner Integration Podcast. So it's not exactly the same as what's coming out on the videos. I highly recommend you check that out. Just go to iTunes or you'll see the links below to check out the Inner Integration Podcast. There's loads of content in there for you. I also want to remind you that on Facebook and on Instagram, we have daily content. I have a virtual assistant who helps me make all those memes. Hi, honey. And she's amazing. She is who's the person responsible for bringing all that, that quality content to you. She'll take the content from my weekly video or the throwback video that we do on the off weeks. And then she makes a bunch of those daily posts for you guys to check out. Also, on Instagram on Wednesdays, I usually do a one-minute Instagram special. It could be related to the video topic of that week or it just might be something else like maybe I read in the comments and somebody was asking me about something or it just like spurred an idea, so I made a little video on that. So you'll find that content as well. And also on Instagram and Facebook, I'll sometimes just share other things, other links that I find or I'll share somebody else's post and then I'll add my own commentary on that and I really do try to check in on those comments at least several times a week if not every day sometimes I can't get to it every day but I like to add some things into those comments so that you can read those and get value from there as well I'm sending you all a big hug